Hi, hey everybody. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham. Uh, this is The Economy and You, uh, every Wednesday at 3 o'clock. And um, so uh, last week we had a, a pretty interesting show. We had Cam Cavasso on talking a little bit about uh, his take on what's going on with, uh, going on with Obamacare. And uh, this week we're going to talk a little bit about, um, we're going to be talking to an entrepreneur. Uh, one of the things I do love to do with this show is talk to um, entrepreneurs about what they're doing in, the biz in their business space and what they're doing to sort of uh, create new opportunities. And today's guest, uh, I'd like to introduce him. Uh, introduce him. He's from what's the name of your company? Oahu Fresh. Oahu Fresh. And you're Matt Johnson. Matt Johnson. Matt, um, we talked just a little bit, Matt. Um, welcome to the show, by the way, Matt. Thank right you. On. Thank, thank you, for, you. Thank you for coming on yeah, the show today. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to, to, to uh, sort of get an idea because you are a successful startup business. That's, I like the sound of that. That sounds yeah, good. Yeah. Yes. And you've been at this since 2010. Correct. Okay. So, you know, um, and you're doing food delivery. Now, yes. you're, who do you deliver food to? So, kind of the, the way we got started with Oahu Fresh is that we're connecting uh, families, offices, restaurants, hotels with local produce. Okay. So, we have a network of about 10 local farms, all based here on Oahu, and then we package uh, all local produce in a variety of different ways, and then we can take that to people's homes, uh, take it to people's offices. We also have drop points where people can pick up their food. And then we also have the traditional uh, distribution models where we deliver produce to restaurants, okay. hotels, okay. places like that. So you have multiple streams of income coming from this business, whether it's from homes, whether it's from businesses or restaurants. Correct. Okay, all right, okay. Now, what, this seems to me a business model that has disrupted the traditional uh, business model um, in that um, you're doing you actually deliver food to people's homes and this really hasn't been something we've done since the days of the the milkman right. coming in and dropping off milk at your doorstep right okay so what was it that sort of got you involved in this? how did you sort of develop a passion for this yeah so um, I first moved to Hawaii back in 2006 and before that I was actually working in the Philippines as a Peace Corps volunteer oh and so I was a business advisor working with farmers, fishermen, nice. helping them develop basic business plans pretty okay. much. Okay. Just trying to figure out if we're making money or not. And so when I transitioned to Hawaii, I was working with a nonprofit and we we're helping farms access different grant programs. So helping them get fun. Financing. This is for the farmers? Correct. Okay, so then you were initially started off helping the, the people who are working to grow all the vegetables yeah. and teaching them how to be successful right, and find resources. Yep. And uh, so then, sort of, what, where, where was the epiphany in all of this? Uh, it was when the Blaisdell Farmer's Market was opening up in 2009. Um, really thought that was going to be one of the best farmer's markets ever, just in terms of the location. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Pahana time. Right. And when it first opened up, it really wasn't having a lot of success. So that for me was was kind of surprising, and that's where kind of came up with uh, kind of the, the question almost as a joke, like what more do we need to do to get people to support our local farmers and access um, good, fresh produce? So now you had a distribution problem. Yes. Okay. So you, you, you're now working with the farmers. They're, they're successfully growing the crop, mm -hmm. and now it's getting them in front of the consumers to buy them. And, and, and the great thing here is that you're buying fresh, fresh locally grown produce. Correct. Right. Okay. Which is, of course, we know today that that's really a big imperative, and that's going on all over the country. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, sourcing locally and producing local foods, and and and, and restaurant sourcing mm -hmm. from local farmers. So, um, so when you sort of okay, so what what else do you need to do turned into what? How did that sort of go? What was your sort of your first take? What What did you start with? Yeah. So, um, just started off with uh, a friend of ours. Um, and we were kind of going off the CSA model, which is a com community supported agriculture, where the typical model with that is that you're a single farm. At the beginning of the season, you'll collect uh, money from potential customers to help with some of your startup costs. And then throughout the season, as you're having a harvest, your customers will then get a percentage of the share okay. or percentage of the harvest. And so we just kind of twisted that model a little bit. We weren't all farm ourselves but we created a, a network of farms. And instead of kind of going season by season, since Hawaii does have year-round growing, right. we're able to provide 
uh, a CSA type bag uh, weekly to our members. Okay, so then, and that's based of course on what's, what's available. Yeah, okay. so we're working with the farms where it's nice in that we're not a typical, say like a restaurant contacting a farm saying, hey, I need to have you know, X amount of pounds of tomatoes every week um, where we have more flexibility. Where we're working with the farm, the uh -huh. farm is communicating to us what they have. Uh, sometimes they may have a bumper crop, so they have uh, excess in a certain amount of product, so they're, okay. they're trying to move that product. And so we can kind of step in there and help them with that. Okay, so that means if they have it, you have an excess of product, does that mean when I go to the restaurant that they're going to be pushing that product to me when I, when I sit down at the table? Uh, it depends. Yeah. So the, 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 the kind of the relationship that we have the restaurants is a little bit different. Some of the restaurants are kind of adopting that um, mindset as well, where their menu is constantly changing as well. So places like Cactus, uh -huh. uh, Town Restaurant in Kaimu Key, um, they're trying to have a more flexible menu as well, depending on what's available and what's in season. Okay, okay, Ex excellent. So now, you know, since you started this, what did you look at? I mean, when you decided to, to, to start this business model, sort of what research did you do? Mm. Um, was this all just be sort of off the cuff, or were you, did you actually do some, go in and do some, some research? It was probably a combination of the two, um, where primarily what we need to figure out was whether or not this is going to work from the, the farmer's perspective. We, we knew with the research that we've done where there's similar models that are already happening on the mainland. So we're able to kind of research those and kind of get an idea of how they work. Mm -hmm. But for us, it was all it came down to um, if it was going to work for the farmers. Yeah. And so it took a little bit of time, having some conversations. And probably about after a month, we decided to go ahead and do a, a kind of a, a trial run. Okay. And just starting off with the back of my pickup truck, and we had some friends who were interested in trying, so we started off with about um, four bags that we went ahead and we were able to accept payment from our customers when ahead you say of time. Four bags, what do you mean four bags? So the, the primary product that we offer to our members is a, a $20 farmer's market bag. Oh, okay. Now what's in there? So every week is changing. Okay. Um, what do you got this week? Tell us what you're doing. So, this yeah, week. in this week's bag, we had. Um, <laughs> Barnet squash okay. and long beans coming from Hope Farms up in Kahuku. Okay. Uh, we had uh, aquaponic lettuce coming from Mari's Garden in uh -huh. Manalani. And then we also had some Nalo greens coming from Nalo Farms okay. out of Waimanalo. Uh -huh. And then we also had tomatoes uh, coming from Haula with uh, green growers. You know, this is making me a little hungry. <laughs> yeah, 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 I bet. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It sounds good. <laughs> it huh? does, really. It sounds awesome. And what's neat then is that, so with that, that, that weekly bag, um, as, a, as a member, you don't get to pick and choose what's in the bag. We're, we're like I said before, we're kind of putting together the bag based on seasonality, availability. Uh -huh. But then you can add on what we call specialty items. So these are things like free-range eggs, okay. jams, jellies, butter, coffee. Uh, a whole lineup of different things you can add on. No, so how do I like if I if I like this? So how do I get uh, how do I how do I get get a hold of you? How do I uh, sign up for your service? Yeah, so um, everything goes through our website, oahufresh.com, uh -huh. and um, you can go on there, and it's a subscription type service. So once you subscribe, you can sign up for either weekly or every other week delivery. Uh -huh. uh, everything's going to automatically happen. So you'll be uh, debited each week um, for the bag and then okay. we'll automatically show up with your bag of produce. So what do you do now, you know a lot of people live in vertical structures in Hawaii mm -hmm. today and I, I gotta imagine that this is a challenge. It, it is and we've become very good at um, being, I don't want to say stealthy, but figuring out uh, each building that we go to has its own unique uh, I guess characteristics on how to get into the building. <laughs> so yeah. we've become very good at right? accessing buildings. Yeah, I love that. It, it comes comes with the territory. Right, so I want to know your secret. So next time I run for office, I know right, how to right. Get into the building. We'll talk about that off camera. <laughs> okay, that's excellent. <laughs> yeah. So um, now your your business model, I think, is unique, and and you're and you're doing this for homes, you're doing this for individuals, you do it for restaurants. So I'm, I'm kind of interested, like, when you're, did you have to get any funding to get launched for this business? Like you said, you just used what you had available to you. Mm. Um, yeah, pretty much it's been kind of bootstrapping from the beginning. Uh -huh. um, the nice thing about this model is that um, 
we were able to kind of start off and, and our customers are paying ahead of time. So that's part of the model is that the week before you get your bag, uh -huh. that's when you're, you're paying for it. So we know exactly how much product we need to order from the farms that we work with. So okay. in that sense, we're, we're kind of getting our funding ahead of time. So you sort of build backward into, your, into what you're going to deliver based on what it's going to cost you. So you really have sort of removed the risk component of whether or not you're going to make money at the end of the week. Uh, correct. And also it helps us pay the farms that we work with a lot quicker as well, uh -huh. uh, a lot quicker than a typical restaurant would be able to or you know, a grocery store. So that's part of our mission as well as what we're trying to do is that this is another market, another avenue to support uh, local farmers. Okay, so I wanted to, this is, I, and I love what you've got here because, you know, there's a lot of things that you're doing that just, from a business perspective, make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. You're working off a subscription, mm -hmm. and if anybody's an entrepreneur out there, you know, if you're, if you're getting su subscription revenue, it's almost passive income. It's like you don't have to work for that new customer every week because they're on a subscription basis. So this allows you to grow your business. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that's what it's done over, over, over the last five years. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been successful at being able to, to grow. Um, you know, as I said before, we started off with just four of our friends who were um, kind of the guinea pigs and testing it out. Uh -huh. And then uh, we've just been able to grow to about 150 uh, members as of uh, this month. Okay. So yeah, we're, we've been happy with the growth. and. Um, just kind of doing one step at a time. Okay, so how many um, uh, how many customers do you project that you get each month? Do you get new customers, or do you have like a turnover of customers? Yeah, I mean there can be a, a turnover. Um, so it really uh, varies. So recently I brought on a, a new uh, marketing manager, Nancy, who's kind of helping with um, set up some different programs. So one of the things that's been neat is we started working with schools as a fundraising program. Oh. Um, so we're working with a relatively new school out in Kamuki, uh, Seeks. And, um, What's so it called? Seeks. Can you spell that? Uh, S-E-E-Q-S. I'm not exactly sure Seeks? what it stands okay. for. All right. Okay. But uh, it's kind of a, a new uh, charter type school and uh, okay. really sharp students. And I've gone there before and met with them and had some conversations about local food. And so what we're doing with, with bringing Oahu Fresh there is that we're incorporating it as part of the fundraising uh, platform for the school. For the school. So that all of the delivery fees that we charge uh -huh. for each bag that we deliver there is going back to the school. Okay, so is this like food being used for the kids for the school lunches? Or is no, this, this is more for the families. For the families, okay, yeah. all right. Okay. So we drop off at the end of the school day uh -huh. The parents come and pick up their children, and then they also pick up their produce bag at the so same time. So they pick up the food each week when they pick up their kids? Correct. That's awesome. I just love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> How innovative is that? That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, and we're trying to make it as, as um, really, uh, I guess, flexible and as easy as possible for, you know, for our members. Okay. Now, have you thought about maybe um, transitioning this business model to other schools? Absolutely. Yeah, so this is one of the first schools um, that we're working with right now, but this is something that we could use not just for schools, but we're also talking to some of the um, paddling clubs. Okay. Um, so any group that really is doing any type of fundraising um, could work with us and, and set up a similar type program. Well, you know, the thing that I like about this is that you're getting, you're, you're actually figuring out, you know, there's a... Um, and I want to use an analogy. There's the analogy of you go to, um, I remember going to high school, and then there were sidewalks. And the sidewalks, of course, were this way, and they were this way. Um, and, uh, of course, and then there were all these uh, pathways that people had cut through the grass. Right. Right? And when I think of that, they cut these pathways through the grass. They weren't st the kids weren't staying on the sidewalk. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. they were carving their own path. Yeah. And, and so later on, we figured out, you know what? We need to put the sidewalks where people walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And what I saw, what I see here is that you're essentially, it's the same principle. Mm. You're figuring out where people are. Rather than having them come to you, you're coming to them. You're coming to them where they are. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that's, um, that's an interesting component of what, you got, what, what you've got going on here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's excellent. Um, that just shows how responsive, when you're a small business, how you should be responsive to the needs of your, of yeah. your, of your customer. That's a really good analogy. I like that. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, it yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, so um, now, you know, 
I, I would, we're going to go to commercial here in a minute. When we come back, what I'd like to do is I would like to talk a little bit about GMOs. I want to talk about obesity. Um, we have a diabetes problem here in Hawaii. And, um, you know, I'm a real advocate or an evan evangelist for people eating well mm -hmm. and exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I want to talk a little bit about that because that's really, you know, that's a huge problem here in Hawaii. Yeah, and we need definitely. to talk about solutions. So we're talking about solutions to having people live healthier lives, mm -hmm. eat, learning to eat well. Yeah. Um, and um, so we're going to do that. And so I think uh, we can go to commercial anytime you're ready. Uh, I'm Chris. Here's the deal. Um, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm the host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy which is the Energy Policy Forum's program on Wednesday. That's how we call Wednesday Energy Wednesday. We call it Energy Wednesday every Wednesday. <laughs> Are you surprised? Okay, and we, and we try to we get guys like Jim Alberts here from Hawaiian Electric who can tell us what's really going on in energy. We want to be informed. It's so important. It's the most important initiative in our state. <laughs> Clean energy is major, okay? And that's how we cover it on this show. That's the deal. What do you think, Sharon? I think that's great. That's why we're here every Wednesday from 4 to 5, and we hope you all join us so we can hear people like Jim coming on our show and co-host Ray Starley from Hawaii Energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here today. You've seen this. You heard what she said. What do you think? I think it's a tremendous opportunity for people to come together and talk about the issues. Oftentimes, there isn't a good forum to bring these key issues out into the public, and this is a tremendous way to go about it. And activity of this show is essential to keep talking about energy because as you said it's such an essential part of our lives that we need to pay attention to it and we need to think about the future okay Ray your turn well this is a special time in the history of Hawaii where we're making some pretty radical changes in the way we uh, use energy and generate energy and this show is the one place you can count on coming to every Wednesday and hearing something about the latest issues that are on the table being discussed that will affect us all going forward. So uh, come join us, and if you have some ideas you want to share with us about energy, uh, give us a call and let us know. We'll, we'll put you up here and, uh, and let you talk for an hour. So uh, come see us. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be, from Think Tank's point of view, it's great to have this show. We love the show. It's our it's our most important show. <laughs> so come around and listen to us four to five on Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Bye. Aloha. 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 We're back. Hi, I'm Chris Letham, and this is the Economy and You. Um, today we're we're talking about the food delivery business with Oahu Fresh with Matt. Uh, Matt's been doing this business for five years now. Five years now. Five years. Um, we talked a little bit about your business model because, you know, I, one of the things that I like to do on this show is talk to people about, you know, how they're launching their business, how they're doing with it. In, and, you know, Hawaii is not known as a business-friendly state. Mm, correct. Um, and um, there's a lot of regulations. Of course, we're, we're, we're bloated in terms of the number of people who work in the state or, or um, city and county government compared to other states around the country. Mm -hmm. um, and so have you found... Have you found issues in terms of uh, things that you found challenging as a business person? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely challenges. One right now is um, just trying to find an affordable place to work out of. Yeah. So one of the biggest needs that we have is, is cold storage. And so trying to find places. Um, right now, we're working uh, out of Kakaoka. We've been based there since the beginning. But as you know, there's a lot of redevelopment happening. Yes. And it's been really challenging um, trying to find appropriate um, places that we can work out of in that uh, area. And you need to be strategically located, I would imagine. That's really an imperative to your business model. Correct. Yeah, because really the main thing of what we're doing is what we call a food hub. Okay. And so it's kind of a centralized aggregation point for local produce to come into. So that's why we really like where we are in Kakaako right now, um, where we have easy access to a lot of our uh, subscribers, but then also to a lot of the restaurants that we work with and yeah. also for all the produce coming in from around the island, it's a good central location. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Kakako, that sort of area around Ward area, is that where you're, you're currently located? Yeah. Okay, okay. I wanted to touch a little bit about some of the, the more dicier issues. Mm. Uh, we've had this ongoing controversy over GMOs mm -hmm. here in Hawaii. 
and you're boots on the ground mm. with this issue. And um, your farmers are probably, some of them probably grow some crops that are GMO. Um, some of the farmers do. And one of the things that, you know, we answer the question a lot, we get phone calls like, hey, you know, make sure there's no GMO products in, uh -huh. in our weekly bag that we get. And really the truth is the, the only potential crop that could be GMO that's grown for human consumption in Hawaii is papayas. Papaya. But yeah. that's really a necessary necessity for papaya because otherwise the pi papaya would have been wiped out a long time ago. Right. So there was a, a virus, I believe, back in the 80s that came in and was wiping out the, the entire papaya industry. Right. Um, and so that's when the, the GMO variety was introduced. And yeah, so that in essence saved uh, the industry. Mm -hmm. And so we're still able to have papayas today. You, there are papayas though, that are being grown locally that are non-GMO. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay, so you can you can find it, and sometimes we do have uh, papayas in our bag, and we actually make sure that they are a non-GMO variety. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Now, what is your sort of your thoughts on? I know on the neighbor islands there's a lot of GMO uh, crops. Mm -hmm. Now, are those are not for human consumption or? Yeah, for the most part, um, what I guess a lot of the controversy is around is some of these large uh, multinational corporations that are coming in and testing uh, corn production. Um, so they're coming in and growing corn, which isn't being sold or consumed here in Hawaii, where it's typically being shipped back to the mainland. And either this is only for testing purposes uh -huh. or it's actually being grown for Seed. Animal consumption. Or animal consumption. Yeah. Okay, not, not necessarily seed. Uh, it, it varies. May, maybe, okay, it may vary. Okay, all right, okay. So my thought on the GMO is, you know, I've looked at the GMO issue, and I, and I know that uh, this issue, I'm just going to sort of touch on this issue a little bit, because, you know, in my, in my, my mind is, if, as a consumer, I would want, it, I would want the choice. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would just like to have the labeling there that lets me, lets me know what I'm consuming. Mm -hmm. And let the consumer make the decision as to whether or not that they want to consume these products or not. Yeah. Uh, I think that's only fair. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like going, you know, getting married to somebody and then finding out later that they, they're carrying tons of debt. Right. Right. You right. know, you've yeah. just married into a whole bunch of debt. You want to know before you sign up. Yeah, line. you would like to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, um, I'd like to just mention that people are welcome to call or to tweet us at uh, Think Tech High. Uh, if you'd like to give us a tweet uh, or ask us a question, um, and so give me your pick to take to the west. What's the take the to take the west? I'm not sure I understand that. Are one. they asking you about the NBA or about yeah. GMO? I don't know. It looks like a question about <laughs> stop about a pick about the NBA. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you handle that question. I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's. Uh, we, we'll defer that question to somebody else. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing that I would like to talk a little bit about is um, I'd like to talk about childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the challenges that we have here in Hawaii is that there is uh, quite a bit of uh, obesity. Correct. Um, and so is there any part of your, any part of your mission statement um, that talks about eating healthy or promoting uh, healthier food choices? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that we've, we've realized is we've, we've created this um, you know, $20 bag that I was talking about before, and we try to make it as convenient as possible, delivering it to homes, drop-off points, offices. Uh -huh. But we're realizing that we need to take it a step further and really incorporate more of a, a cooking-type um, mm -hmm. uh, mentality with it. Yeah. So, we're always providing recipe recommendations with what's in the bag, uh -huh. but also something that we're planning on doing throughout the year is doing more cooking demonstrations. Oh, really? So we're actually setting up um, kind of a, a, a trial right now at UH. Uh -huh. We're going to work with one of the dorms that actually has a community kitchen. And I hope this is the guy's dorm. I really do, because you <laughs> yeah. know, the guy, some of us guys are the worst cooks. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and we don't have mama to help cook for us yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we need all the help we can get, right? That's what we do. We, we, you know, so, but you know what? A guy, if he puts his mind to it, can learn to be a good cook. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. And our approach, though, is that 
Uh, a lot of times when you go to these cooking demonstrations, you have these, you know, well-known celebrity type chefs and mm -hmm. they're doing all these fancy things. Right. But um, I mean, I like to cook, but I'm, you know, I'm just a regular guy cooking, um, doing what I can. So that's going to be kind of our approach is that it doesn't have to be super fancy all the time when you cook. It's just yes. some very simple basics that we want people to become comfortable with. Yes, yes. Now, what, what we, we need to do is figure out a way to create containers that we can cook from and eat from at the same time. Mm. That way we don't have to do so many dishes. There you go. That's it. You know, because I'm tired of eating over the sink. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, as a, as a guy who lives alone, I you know that's the thing is I like I dread doing dishes. Okay. So if All I right. cook, I know I got to do a whole bunch of dishes afterwards, right? Yeah. So I, I just want to sort of add that little tidbit of yeah. thought. So if we well, can figure out a way to cook and eat in the same under the same appliance, we're in great shape. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that idea. There's another business idea. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so but um, you know one of the things that's really challenging is when you talk to 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 people, and, and I've noticed looking at my family history, is the foods that we grew up eating are the foods that we, can, that we continue to cook and serve our children. Mm. But we're seeing that that is a problem. And, um, you know, learning to shop well mm -hmm. and buy quality foods, um, one of the rules of thumb that I was given was shop on the, if you're going to go to the store and shop, mm. Shop in the periphery area. Mm. That's where you do your shopping. Right. Right. Stay out of the middle. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in the middle, you're in you're in the you're in the bad bad area. You want to get out of there. You want to go, unless of course you're going for spices. You know, then you want to get some spices right. and stuff like that. But a lot of the stuff that comes in boxes. The other, yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, that's what I was going to say. Like you were talking before about you know knowing what products have GMO in them or not. Uh -huh. Chances are, if you're shopping in the middle and you're purchasing a you know a packaged processed meal. There, there's definitely GMO products that are going to be incorporated into that package. So like you said, if you're shopping on the outside, um, you have a much better chance of you know, going and buying the whole foods right. and knowing, knowing, what you're, knowing what you're getting even without necessarily having to have uh, labeling. Yeah, okay. So stay on the outside. And the, other, the other advice that I was given is if the food is something, if grandma were to look at that food and know what it is, it's probably okay. But if she doesn't know what it is, you probably don't want to be Yeah, eating it. <laughs> the, the grandma litmus test. Yes, yeah, that's right, that's right, grandma. What, what yeah. would grandma do? Uh-huh, yeah. that's right, yeah, you know, like, um, I don't know, what is it, the, um, the yogurt, like the squeeze yogurt? Oh, okay. I don't think grandma would know what squeeze, yeah. squeezable yeah. yogurt is. <laughs> grandma would frown at that for sure. <laughs> so, I, you know, so, you know, eating healthy and eating right, um, and, um, learning to, to, to prepare the foods. It sounds like a great idea. If you've got some um, recipes and things like that that are easy to follow, because God knows if you make it complicated, some of us are not going to be able right, to figure right. it out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, that really sounds like a great idea. And it also seems to me that if you're, um, if you're able to do that, and extend, you're extending not only great food, but the knowledge on how to prepare it properly mm -hmm. and eat well, um, this sounds like you've got a great thing going. Um, so I'd like uh, maybe to bring up some of the photos. Do we have some of the pictures? Um, you have anything that you can pop up there for us, Sachi? Okay, here we go. Okay, so maybe you could give us a little background on this. Yeah, so this is uh, Neil Ho with Ho Farms uh, up at the farm in Kahuku. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe there's Swiss chard in the ground there behind them. And uh, yeah, so this is a a great second generation farm that's um, really becoming well known. They're, uh -huh. they're especially known for their um, tomatoes. Okay. So they're vine ripened tomatoes. So what about pesticides or the need to use pesticides here in Hawaii? Is that or, or um, things to deter bug growth and weeds and things like that? What are we doing here? Well one of the the blessings but also the curses about Hawaii is it has a year-round uh, growing period. Right. Where on the mainland, where there's uh, a freeze period that's coming and kind of wiping the slate clean <coughs> yeah. in terms of killing off pests. Mm -hmm. uh, so in Hawaii, we don't have that. So for certain crops and certain farms, they, they do have to spray uh, when needed. So sometimes it's a balance between either we spray and we save some of the crop or we don't spray and we lose our entire field. Okay, so when you, when you spray, um, you're using, these, are herbis these are pesticides mostly or herbicides? Uh, it just depends on what um, what the issue might be. So if you have uh, a bug issue, you're going to be spraying pesticides. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're having an issue with weeds, which 
um, is huge issues in some of the farms that I've seen, um, then you're going to be spraying an herbicide. Okay. All right. Now, do you spray the herbicide before the crop grows or as the crop is growing? Uh, it depends. So there's different types of herbicides. Um, so it just kind of depends on the situation. Does it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you were working in the Philippines. You said you were working in the Philippines before? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Was this a common problem that they, they had there as well? Uh, in terms of spraying? Yeah, needing to use herbicides and pesticides, bugs, and, and weeds. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of an issue that you're going to have worldwide. Uh -huh. um, so it just depends. And one of the bigger issues, in my opinion, is you know, whether or not the, the pesticides and herbicides are being used properly. So there's very detailed uh, regulation on how you can use it. Uh -huh. So when you can spray in terms of the relation to when you're going to harvest, uh, how much of a certain product you're able to use, whether or not you're even able to use that product. Okay. Um, so there's very strict guidelines on how you can or cannot apply the different sprays. The different sprays, okay, all right. Well, we're going to go to commercial. Um, uh, we've got one last segment to do here in the show. Um, and uh, I'm Chris Lisa, this is The Economy and You, and we'll be right back. Here's the deal. Um, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm the host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is the Energy Policy Forum's program on Wednesday. That's how we call Wednesday Energy Wednesday. We call it Energy Wednesday every Wednesday. <laughs> Are you surprised? Okay, and we, and we try to we get guys like Jim Alberts here from Hawaiian Electric who can tell us what's really going on in energy. We want to be informed. It's so important. It's the most important initiative in our state. <laughs> Clean energy is major, okay? And that's why we cover it on this show. That's the deal. What do you think, Sharon? I think that's great. That's why we're here every Wednesday from 4 to 5, and we hope you all join us so we can hear people like Jim coming on our show and co-host Ray Starley from Boy Energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here today. You've seen this. You heard what she said. What do you think? I think it's a tremendous opportunity for people to come together and talk about the issues. Oftentimes, there isn't a good forum to bring these key issues out into the public, and this is a tremendous way to go about it. And the, the activity of this show is essential to keep talking about energy because, as you said, it's such an essential part of our lives that we need to pay attention to it and we need to think about the future. Okay, Ray, your turn. Well, this is a special time in the history of Hawaii where we're making some pretty radical changes in the way we uh, use energy and generate energy. And this show is the one place you can count on coming to every Wednesday and hearing something about the latest issues that are on the table being discussed that will affect us all going forward. So. Uh, come join us, and if you have some ideas you want to share with us about energy, uh, give us a call and let us know. We'll, we'll put you up here and, uh, and let you talk for an hour. So uh, come see us. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be, from Think Tank's point of view, it's great to have this show. We love the show. It's our, it's our most important <laughs> show. So come around and listen to us 4 to 5 on Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Bye. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, welcome back. This is Chris Leatham. Um, the Economy and You is our show, and today's guest is Matt from Oahu Fresh. Matt Johnson. Hey, Chris. Hey. We're, uh, we've we been talking a little bit about your business model, and then we talked a little bit about obesity and, and some of these other issues and some of the farms. I wanted to bring up a few more photos here because, yeah. you know, I just really have to uh, commend everything that you're doing. Oh, thank you. Okay, because I'm sourcing locally really does a lot of great things. It goes to our whole sustainability model. Yeah. You know, we want to be able to have crops and sustain ourselves. You know, if whatever should happen, if for, the, for whatever reason planes can't fly, mm. we need to be able to keep eating. Right on. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, here's an interesting photo. Can you give us a little bit about what is this? Um, so, yeah, so this is a wheelbarrow full of taro um, from Kako Ivi. It looks like a piece of art. Well, it is. Actually, <laughs> um, my friend Noah, uh -huh. who's a photographer, uh -huh. um, he was able to do some kind of special photography with that shot. So the, the colors um, is definitely somewhat enhanced yeah, um, yeah. to really give it that kind of really pops from the, yeah, from the it's, picture. Yeah, it's a nice picture. Do we have any other photos to bring up? 
Oh, keep talking. Okay, all right, we're going to keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's taro that's being grown by a nonprofit in Hiia. Uh huh. And um, they have about a uh, lease of about 600 acres, um, which okay. pretty much takes over the entire valley. That's a lot of taro. That's a lot of taro. So what do you do with taro? You know, I'm, I'm, I've lived in Hawaii since I was 27 years old, and I've eaten my share of poi, but what do you do with taro beyond poi? Well, a lot of times you can just cook it like a potato. I mean, that's uh -huh. kind of one of the, the easiest ways to, to handle it, uh -huh. but also making taro chips. Okay. Um, so that's a relatively easy, straightforward way to, uh, to handle. But yeah, there's a whole variety of different things so that you can do. So I'm going to make a special request, if I can. Okay. Come up with some things that I can do with taro. Okay. Okay. Make sure it's in your bag of recipes. All right. All right. You know, I, I mean, I can only eat so much poi. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah, that would be great. Um, and that's actually um, one of the sessions we're going to have where we're going to invite the, the farm and also combine them with a the chef to actually cook and prepare with taro. So kind of presenting different things that you can do with uh -huh. it. Because we try to have that in the bag whenever we can. Um, last week we actually had cassava in the okay, bag, which okay. is something that uh, for a lot of our uh, members may not be extremely used to, to working with. Yes. Um, so we do try to put in different things. So, um, you know, we want to have as much information out there as possible uh -huh. on how you can properly prepare them. Okay, because otherwise I'm going to be knocking on my neighbor's door yeah. going, what do I do with this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so if I've got something that I've never prepared before, mm -hmm. you know, and I get it in my bag, I'm going to, I'm going to be sort of like, okay, I've I've just been given a challenge. Yeah. On what well, I'm do you with it. you definitely need to be adventurous. Yeah. You know, because you don't. You know, this isn't grocery shopping. So. Uh -huh. So absolutely, there's going to be times when there's things in your bag that you may not have used before, uh -huh. and that's part of the whole, uh, I guess, uh, mission of what we're trying to do. Uh, yes. Yes. And it's a bit of an adventure, isn't it? Yeah. You absolutely. Know? Absolutely. <laughs> you don't really know what you're going to get in your bag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's interesting. So, but let me, let me, I want to kind of talk a little bit about the growth of your business. Okay, mm. so where are you at now? What territory do you have? So if I'm out there, I, I, I want to know what is your, your, your sort of your, your, your current customer base? Where are they located? Um, so our current customer base, for the most part, is located in the Honolulu area. Uh huh. Um, so our normal delivery route is from Chinatown to Kamuki. Okay. Um, but then we'll also have some drop points that we do. So we have a drop at Libra Community College in mm -hmm. Pearl City. And then we also have a couple of drop points in Kailua, uh, one at Cactus Restaurant and another one at Madre Chocolate. When you say drop points, these are drop points for people who are sort of, would be a home delivery, they're going to go by and pick it up? Correct. So we're not doing home delivery uh, in those areas, but you can come and pick up your bag at those locations. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, this is one of your trucks here. Uh, yeah, so um, this is actually us out at Kahomana Organic Farm out uh -huh. in Waianae. And um, so what we also do is we work with some of the, the farms uh, in our network to help actually deliver their products as well. Um, so, as I'm mentioning before, uh -huh. we have our, our membership bags that we deliver, right. but then we'll also deliver product from the farm um, to different restaurants, uh, Whole Foods, Safeways. Okay, so um, you're facilitating, you're, you're not just transporting for your own business, but you're doing this to facilitate the delivery for, for the farmers. Correct. Okay, which is, boy, they got to love you for that. Yeah, well, I mean, we have a, a refrigerated van, which is a, a great resource. Yeah. And a lot of the farms don't have that kind of resource themselves. Uh -huh. so that's where we try to step in and help them out. Okay, okay. They, 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 okay, so that's all sort of, again, that's all part of your overall business model. Then. Correct. Okay, yeah. okay. So let's talk about growth of your business. Let's mm. talk about how you, sort of, your vision in terms of how you're going to grow, what new territories you're looking to expand into. Yeah. Um, so one of the areas we're looking to really start expanding into is, is the Kailua, uh, Kaneohe area. Okay. So right now we are doing the dro a couple of drop points that I mentioned before, uh -huh. but eventually we hope to be able to do home delivery uh, there as well. Okay. Um, we're Which also... It's not condos, right, for the most part, so you can actually drop it at their home. Correct. More easily. You don't have to figure out a way to get there. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so then... Um, um, if people wanted to order in Kaneohe Kailua, could they go on your website and order now? 
Uh, they could, but um, the only options that they have as of right now would be to pick up uh, either Cactus Restaurant or Madre Chocolate. Now, where is Cactus Restaurant located? Uh, it's right there as you're entering Kailua, uh, at the corner of Hamakua, Hamakua Drive. So is this on the main route, like if you're coming over the Pali and you're coming into Kailua? Yep, so you come over the Pali and you go down the hill and then you're coming into Kailua town. It's at that first intersection at the corner. At the corner, right there on the corner. Mm -hmm. So stop your car, run in, yep. grab your bag. Yep, and you can also stick, stick around and have some food there or have uh -huh. a drink. Do they, do they serve uh, Mai Tai margaritas or anything like oh, that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, oh, that's <laughs> that's your a spot. great excuse to have a margarita, right? Yeah. So I'm going to pick up my uh, pick up my groceries. Oh, yeah. by the way, while I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, no drinking and drive. I mean, don't, don't drink to excess. But absolutely. Obviously, um, yeah, I just have a little bit something to drink on the way home. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, um, so uh, that's Kailua, and you talked about Kaneohe. Uh, yeah, hoping to be able to expand into Kaneohe as well. Okay, so tell us again. I want you to recap some of the stuff that you put in the bag because mm. I, I want to get people's taste buds going here okay. a little bit. So, yeah, so as I mentioned, every week um, <coughs> you know, it's changing uh, what's in the bag, but we have a, a model that we follow. So there's always uh, a head of lettuce. Okay. Um, so that's coming from Mari's Garden, and so it's one of the, actually the largest uh, aquaponics farm in the state. Okay. Uh, growing up in Mililani. And then we almost always have a starch. Um, so this week we had corn in the bag uh, coming from Lelewa High School. Okay, that's sweet corn. Sweet corn. Okay. Yep. Um, and then we almost always have a second green. So this week we had what's called uh, Nalo Greens um, okay. coming from Nalo Farms. It's kind of like a mixed bag <clears throat> of baby greens. And then we have tomatoes. So these are like the beefsteak slicing tomatoes coming from Haula. Okay. And then we also have, uh, which is a seasonal crop, a uh, butternut squash. Okay. Was in the bag this week, and also long beans, both coming from which is, Whole Farms. Which is really, really tasty. So yeah. sweet. That yeah. butternut squash is just amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things that at first can be intimidating, but it's actually very easy where all you have to do is cut it open, put some butter and maybe some... Uh, brown sugar on yes, there, yeah. throw it in the oven and uh -huh. roast it, and you're good to go. Yeah, it's, and it's so tasty. Yeah. It, it really is. If you haven't had it, it's just tasty. Now, I would tell me about your targeted client, uh, business professionals, busy, busy single, single people. I could see this for people that are just really busy in their life. Well, yeah, it's for people who really want <coughs> to be, uh, maybe they're already going to the farmer's markets, or they want to be going to the farmer's markets. They're busy professionals and they just don't have the time. Uh -huh. So they really value the convenience and we're, you know, in essence doing the shopping for them. Yeah, and, and that's, I mean, you know, that's so easy then if you get that bag, you pick it up, you come in, you put it in your refrigerator, and if you've got a couple of recipes in there that we get to try out yeah. each week, um, yeah. that allows, allows us to do a little experimentation, trying out new stuff. Yeah. And I, I just love what you're doing. So keep up the good work. Great, thank you. Okay. So um, I wanted to kind of take a moment here um, and briefly um, talk a little bit um, sort of off topic about uh, Lila Berg. Uh, Lila Berg has just written a new book. And I wanted to mention this because uh, we had uh, the, grant, the sort of uh, the opener for her book mm. at the Pacific Club um, on Monday. So I just kind of wanted to, to um, give her kudos. Her book is called Leaving the Gilded Cage. And if you don't know who Lila Berg is, um, she was a member of our legislature for many years, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she has a PhD, and she's written a book, um, really a book about how to motivate people to follow their passions, follow their dreams, mm. um, and to challenge themselves to sort of leave their own gilded cage. So I wanted to just give this a, a quick mention um, because uh, we did, I did get a chance to talk with her. She's an amazing woman, mm. and she's just put her heart and soul into this book. And so if you get a chance, uh, it's Lila Burke, uh, and try and pick up a local co uh, copy from your local bookstore. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, so um, we're down to our last minute here. Um, any words of wisdom or anything that you'd like to, to put out there or say hello? Anybody you want to say hello to or... Uh, well, yeah, I just want to say uh, happy Earth Day. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's great that we're meeting today and have an opportunity to talk about 
um, you know, sustainable agriculture. So that's kind of a, a big area that we're passionate about. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so I just want to say, yeah, thank you for having me on. It was great talking well, with you. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Chris. This is The Economy and You. I'm Chris Leatham, and uh, we hopefully we'll see you here next week, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha, and thank you for, for uh, be watching the show today.